Huh? Are you hearing an echo? No. Not at the moment. Going to the dashboard. Uh, it looks like it's. Yeah, something just connected, didn't it? I heard it ding ya. Yep. Go to live stream. I gotta wait for that to start. Okay, going live over there. Starting the video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Madness Show. I'm your host, Pierre Warner, aka Dr. Reefer, and I'm joined by my world fucking famous, uh, <laughs> super duper co star, Bob Walker. AKA Minor Bob. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to make a quick adjustment on you, move you over just a bit because your right hand is getting cut off in the feed here. And don't know that that's going to help, but we'll see. All right, so there we go. Looks like we are live on Facebook, we are live on YouTube, Twitch periscope and vk so we got everything kicking all right one shot one kill today so yeah it's amazing that it was all done in one shot <laughs> right so uh, so the market cap ugh. i know it, it's uh let me just reload it real quick 253 billion so oh, bitcoin had 45.2 percent dominance today uh ripple well um, everything is down <laughs> except for tether i think last time i looked tether was up and oh ontology sorry ontology is up 5.5 percent to two dollars and 38 cents um crazy right yep and bitcoin diamond up 1.01 .01 .01 to two dollars and 24 cents uh, iOS token up at uh, 15.02% today. And other than that, pretty much the exact opposite of yesterday. So we're pretty much back to where we were when we started the day yesterday. Um, let me see where good old Electronium is. Electronium's down 15.13% to 1.98 cents. So just under two pennies. Uh, what's some of the favorites here? Well, go ahead and uh, let's go to uh, we'll go to titanium bars uh, 24 cents and Where are we which is only down 2.68 which is a lot better than a lot of the others today um, Let's see where syndicate is syndicate is that 30 cents it's down 11.89% so it's at 30 cent right now. So while we got this, I'll go ahead and change this to 0.30. And there we go. Got that updated while we're sitting there. So yeah, kind of crazy. Everything is the uh, exact opposite of where it was yesterday. So. That is just crazy, man. I know. Um, how they just pull out. Yeah, their, their pullout game is strong. So, <laughs> yeah. as, as my nephew yeah. would say, my pullout game is strong. <laughs> but the, uh, hey, Carlene, hey, Jason, hey, Michael, speaking of my nephew. And uh, I guess we need to go ahead and get some shares out there because uh, how many are you uh, showing over there on uh, Facebook? Hold on. 
on the second here, I gotta bring you, bring this tab over here. All right. right there. So far tonight, it's looking like 12 viewers. Come on, guys, let's get some shares out. Smash the like buttons. Uh, do all those uh, things that we do on the show. Okay, now I'll come back to here. Good. Put it over right there. I gotta put down all the tabs. Dude, if we didn't have to do this every single show, we would we'd be able to put five extra minutes of content <laughs> in at least. At least. Here we are. Okay, so share now public. Share now over into the Philippines. Okay, share now to my page. Okay, and check in. Guess we'll check in at LAX. We'll just post. All right. I'm still over right. here sharing. We got Shadow, Juar, Annie, Carleen. What's happening, guys? Yeah, let's see. I'm going to make this big. I'll even share on my public page so I can get publicly ridiculed. <laughs> publicly right. ridiculed? Why are you going to get ridiculed? Uh, you know, there's always a troll. Once a troll, always <laughs> a troll. Uh, going to go ahead and drop your Dr. Reefer gear store in here near the beginning. Although that's crazy long. And let me see if I can go ahead and snatch mine up while I'm over here. Let, let me uh, shorten that up, man. Because that's a crazy link that you just posted. I know, that's the one you sent me yesterday. No, I sent you that one. All right, and there's mine. So we got them, just got that right out of the way in the beginning, guys, so... If, in fact, you uh, feel so inclined to do so, please buy a shirt. And, all right. Help support us and buy a shirt. Right. Um, yeah, definitely. So, you just covered the market cap, man. And God uh, damn. Looks, looks pretty brutal. Go ahead and drop this link in here, too, for the hopper bot. Um, just in case, when we finally get back to what's going on over here, looks like it looks like my little hopper's trying to buy the dip. So everybody knows you got to buy the dip, dip, dip. No. <laughs> you gotta buy the fucking dip. I, I I love that video, man. I'm not gonna lie about it at all. That I, <laughs> I, I love that video. <laughs> Of course, every time we play a video, we get that little copyright infringement, little nice little email and says, oh, but don't worry, you're not being penalized um, because they're still getting the view, credit for the view and advertising. Yay. We know. So why email us then, you know? I guess to let us know that, be careful, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're you're walking on uh, thin ice right there, right? But because we don't actually, um, you know, because we're actually showing a stream of their video, they're still getting the view and all that. So we're not monetizing off of it. We're not capitalizing off of using their video per se. Other than you know, hopefully, if we play a music video and they like it, they go watch it some more. Or share it with somebody, you know, so it's actually could be helping them. So, Ooh. matter of fact, hell, I would like to get those guys on the show. The uh, the guys that um, the buy yeah, the the buy the dip boys and some of those guys, some neat uh -huh. little live guests. So, you know what would be cool <clears throat> if you show it on your monitor there. 
that uh, YouTube video and then um, show posting a comment, you know, hey, you guys want to come on the Crypto Madness show? Yeah, and we can talk about buying the dip, dip, dip. <laughs> right. Hey, they did the video with John McAfee. Maybe they could even hook us up with John McAfee on the show. <laughs> they might. Man. I, think I, I, I think I've left them a comment to come on the show, and they still uh, haven't gotten back to me. What's up, Nick? All right, I got so many screens open right now, guys. Can you guys... He yeah, I can see mine going. So, Echo should be gone tonight, right? Right now, no Echo. I'm hoping. So. I have not looked at Siren Labs. That is... Anything lately. Siren Labs token is up 8.85%. It's number... Where is it on market cap? 125. So it's just on the second page, quarter of the way down. Um, looks like it had a high back here in uh, Jan or January. It had $2.97 as the high. I think that's the high. If I can get to it. No, nope, a little bit higher than that. It went up to $3.62 and currently it is at. Uh, 27 cent so it we went from three dollars and 62 down to 27 cent wow almost 28 cent yep but it's up right now it's, it's up 8.85 percent overall so it's pretty good at... but have not looked at the project yet joe no echo all good cool learning we're learning <laughs> every day little bit something new uh, let me just pull up CCN over here I got a good article man if you want to cover it whenever you're ready to yeah throw me the link or drop the link in there and I'll copy it out of the comments or something um, what what source is it on let me I'm gonna send it to you in messenger Make me flip over to real Facebook. To the real Facebook. Uh, let me to see. the real Facebook. And I just dropped it in the comments. All right. This looks like an interesting article. Monero Band? Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to drop that. Pull that one over here. Bam. Crank right. Served with summons for ten billion lawsuit from Dave Kleiman's estate. What? That looks like a good one there too. Is it all bad news today? This actually must have come out pretty recently because it's saying Thursday, April fifth, and it's only the fourth, so it must be in Europe somewhere. This originated. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> says Monero ban. Latest bank clampdown could be bad news for cryptocurrency investors. Monero's price could be about to plunge after a Canadian bank declared it would no longer allow customers to purchase cryptocurrencies using Interact debit cards. It has emerged. All right, so let's go down here. <clears throat> uh, matter of fact, hold on, guys. I got to pull up the other screen so I can see kind of how it looks on the other screen. All right, so this is a spokesman for the. For the bank confirmed the ban in a statement that could negatively impact the fortunates of Monero on virtual markets by prompting investors to lose confidence. They said, I can confirm that we no longer allow the purchase of cryptocurrencies via Interact online payments or by using a retail customer MasterCard branded credit or debit card. Rumors of the ban have been swirling after pictures emerged on discussion site Reddit of an alleged email sent to employees of the bank explaining the decision had been taken due to the volatile nature of cryptocurrencies. The email stated this decision was made due to the volatile nature of cryptocurrencies and so to better protect the security of our clients and the bank. The decision 
taken by the Canadian bank follows moves taken by Denmark's largest bank, Dansk Bank, that recently published a statement urging its customers to refrain from investing in the field of cryptocurrencies. It read, we have a negative position towards cryptocurrencies and strongly recommend that our customers refrain from investing in the field. Over the past years, cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Monero have gained widespread attention among consumers and investors in many countries. First of all, cryptocurrencies differ from traditional currencies in the sense that they are not backed by a central bank. All right, so they got a nice little slideshow here, but I'm going to go down to the article. It says, they lack the investor and consumer protection typically connected with traditional currencies and investments. Secondly, cryptocurrencies have turned out to be highly volatile and the price formation is non-transparent. As an investor, you have very limited insight on how the market is developing and what is driving the price. The document, or the document highlighted cryptocurrencies such as Monero lack transparency and stated they are a target for criminal purposes. And they've got a nice little uh, video on CNBC. It says, it went on. Thirdly, the most and most importantly, the lack of transparency and regulatory control have made cryptocurrencies a target for criminal purposes, and we know that they on several occasions have been involved in criminal transactions like money laundering or extortion. Hmm, so has the US dollar. Exactly. As a financial institution, we have an obligation to assist in the fight against financial crime and money laundering. At the current stage, cryptocurrencies do not offer the sufficient level of transparency in order for us to live up to our obligations within anti-money laundering regulation. For these reasons, it is not possible to trade cryptocurrencies on our trading platform. However, we monitor the market closely, and if the cryptocurrency market becomes more transparent and mature, we might reconsider this position. Such, such a document highlighting the volatile nature of cryptocurrencies could cause investors to lose confidence in the cryptocurrency market, causing Monero values to fall. Monero is currently trading at $170.28 at the time of writing. All right, so one thing that really draws like a red flag on this article for me is, <clears throat> and you know, they haven't said anything new in what they're saying, but in the beginning of the article, you notice they also call out Bitcoin and Ethereum and Monero. They name yeah. all three of them and then quickly do away with Bitcoin and Ethereum and solely focus on Monero. So, Right? Like, you, what's up with that? Yeah. So, oh, I think what it is is the market's down and they need to get some of that uh, proof of weak hands going on over there. <laughs> I wonder how that thing is doing, man. I don't know. I, I, the proof of weekends, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, with this article, they quickly go away with uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin and s strictly look at Monero throughout the... Like Bitcoin Monero almost, man. Yep. Right? But it's $170.28. Okay. So let what is that? Let's see how much we can influence the market by writing a FUD article, you know. So that could be it, man. Because I mean, it seems like they just picked on, uh, you know, Monero here. And what was concerning is that, you know, ETN is a, a fork of Monero chain. Yeah, a fork of Monero. So I was like, huh. This might, uh... It's kind of crazy how they just targeted that one, you know? And what say you, viewers of the you Crypto Show? Matter of fact, I need to open up this restream. Now see, damn it, restream. The little restream chat thing is not showing up over here. 
Ugh. Get the web link. I already had the friggin' web link. Let me go back and get the web link again. And see what it, uh... I'm afraid if I click over that it's going to, uh... Hopefully not take our, uh... Deal away here. Hopefully it didn't, like, unstream us. Alright, let's start that. Alright, it's connecting over yonder, as we say down here. Man, that, uh, that P3D thing is sitting at 18,478F. How much? 18,478. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of F. That's a lot. That's a shit ton. A lot of F right there. Let me move this over here. Yeah, I think they're kind of, uh, they're trolling Monero bastards. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this other article if you haven't looked at it yet. Craig Wright served with summons for 10 billion lawsuit from Dave Kleinman's estate. Uh, and change. I know, that's a lot. Oh, that's not even a long article, so we can get right through this one. Enchain, chief scientist and self-proclaimed Bitcoin creator Craig Wright has received an official summons to appear in court in connection with a mammoth $10 billion lawsuit levied against him by the estate of early Bitcoin adopter Dave Cl Kleinman. Klein yeah, Kleinman. So according to public documents dated March 15th and filed with the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida, Wright has was personally served with a summons on February 22nd. So it says that personal service was offered or was affected and the defendant Craig Wright came to the front door of the property and admitted his identity and freely accepted the service and deponent was able to identify the defendant through open source photographs and the defendant thanked the opponent and then closed the front door to the property the sworn affidavit said. So what the hell does that mean? Okay. As CCN reported, Ira Kleiman, acting on behalf of the estate of his brother Dave Kleiman, was sued, has sued Wright for more than $10 billion, alleging that Wright stole as much as 1.1 million BTC, worth $10.2 billion at the time of the, loss, the lawsuit was filed, belonging to one of the forensic computer investigators' companies following his death in 2013. Kleiman and Wright had allegedly acquired these coins by mining them through W&K into Defense Research LLC. The ownership structure of W&K is in dispute, though Kleiman's estate claims that he was either that he was either the sole owner or held it in partnership with Wright. Either way, they claim that Wright stole at least 550,000 BTC or 1.1 million if WNK was wholly owned by Kleiman. Wright, who lives overseas, must respond to the summons by April 16th. He was originally required to respond sooner, though, or, though the court granted him an extension. Court documents also revealed that he has been represented in previous hearings by attorney Andreas Rivero. Neither Wright nor his attorney has addressed this suit publicly. Kleiman's estate, meanwhile, is represented by Boys Schiller Flexner LLP, a legal firm with offices in both the U.S. and U.K. So, there you go. So, Free Skillshare Media just posted on YouTube, Is POW H3D a scam? So, you want to talk about that, Doc? Sure. Sure. Where is it? Yeah, it was on YouTube. So obviously they're watching on one of the YouTube channels, so they'll be able to hear us on the show. So I don't think it's a scam. Um, it's like a legit Ponzi scheme. Um, not something that I'm going to be getting into. 
I think it can make a, you know, and it looks like it is making a shit ton of uh, money because people are just throwing that into it. I just checked it and it was at 18,400 and something F. And uh, so, like, goddamn, you know, for, for it being, uh, a legal Ponzi, like, you know, I still don't see really the, the long-term benefit of being in it, you know, um, I'd rather, I'd prefer to be in companies instead, you know, that, uh, are building something and that they have a, a chance at, you know, 100 or 1000 X preferably a thousand X <laughs> right always want the thousand X <laughs> always want the thousand X <clears throat> so yeah that's a couple articles um, uh, that came off of CCN um, I, I thought know. Craig right I thought that was the, the, the uh, Bit, Bitcoin or uh, BitConnect, BitConnect guy yeah, yeah. Grant ah Craig Grant so let me see student cryptocurrency miners facing rising costs and squeeze margins i don't know how long that chinese is petro. look at that uh, chinese petro giant sinochem exports gasoline using blockchain technology where did That's you see pretty, it's a where's that one at? case that one's on the front page there it's got the red boat you're watching on youtube ocean. again aren't you <laughs> all right yeah i saw you were, you're on the pigs though that's not really uh that long we'll check that one out chinese petro giant sinochem exports gasoline using blockchain technology sinochem group china's leading energy chemicals agriculture real estate and financial provider has successfully completed the shipment of gasoline using blockchain technology reuters reported that one of its 300 subsidiaries, Sinochem Energy Technology Company Limited, was responsible for exporting the product from China City, Guangzhou, to Singapore. While details of the process were not revealed, it said it was that it that this was the first time that blockchain applications had been applied to all key participants in the commodity trading process. However, the company claims that it that this is not the first blockchain shipment. Instead, one was carried out in December of 2017 for importing crude oil from the Middle East. Sinochem then posted an announcement on its website explaining how the digital bill of lading and smart contracts could save 20 to 30% financial costs. You notice they didn't say uh, save 20 to 30% to the end user. Um, that means it's going to be 20 to 30 percent profit for the company. Uh, yeah, of course. The standardization and platformization of blockchain technology enabled trade in China's petrochemical industry in the future will help improve the transparency of the transaction business in China's petrochemical industry and enhance the overall risk management level of the industry. China has become the top importer of crude oil in the last few months. The country is also exporting a great deal of oil-based products to different countries. So implementing a cost-effective method for future shipment will benefit China in the long run. Uh, digital documentation via blockchain. Paperless trade was initially used through other electronic means. However, the security and authenticity of documents are still, are still not guaranteed. The only way to ensure that documents remain safe from tampering is to use a decentralized network which can only be accessed by its participants. Last year, Delot uh, partnered with DNGGL to track certificates and other products of shipping vessels to put an end to forged documents used by scammers. Earlier this year, IBM and Maersk collaborated to create a new company which will use blockchain for shipping products as well as providing services to offices and ports. Well, there you go. It's pretty interesting, man. They are making changes. That's good, right? Yeah. Because, and they're using it, you know, and they're showing that they're using it, and 
what kind of, you know, why it's better than just a piece of paper. And so. the trending watch is still going on. I'm still trending over there. I don't know that they update that too regular, but hey, I'll take it. If I stay up there for a year, I'm up there for a year. <laughs> I've been up there three months so far. So let's see if they got anything good over here today. Hey, on that uh, little follow-up. On which one? Let's see here. When was this? This was published today on um, CCN. Here, I'll drop it in the comments. It's on the front page. It was off to the side, actually, right? It talks about, uh, has a picture of uh, Vitalik Buterin. Oh, that, is that the one that was like a scam thing that they were talking about? A fraud, Ethereum founder Buterin calls out Satoshi Craig Wright? Yeah. Then that was the Craig Wright that we were just talking about. Yep. So I didn't know his name was, you know, Satoshi Craig, right? Nah, he's claiming that he's Satoshi, I guess, is what they're saying. Really? Yeah. A Dr. Video? Craig Wright. Smacked down by Vitalik. Oh, where, my, where are my degrees? It burns, it burns. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so you you want to read that one, or you want me to plug through this you one too? To. All right. So um, it's titled uh, "A Fraud." Ethereum founder Buterin calls out Satoshi Craig Wright. A video of Vitalik Buterin calling out K Craig Wright at the two-day Deconomy. 2018 conference in Seoul is sure to be going viral in the community. Buterin has the floor for questions after a talk given by Craig Wright titled A Visual Depiction of Bitcoin Scaling and Enterprise Growth. Buterin appears to take issue with the claim made by Wright during the speech, noting that he was in a confrontational mood, Buterin said that Wright had made a blatantly false claim regarding the difficulty of certain cryptographic, cryptographic tasks and making the Lightning Network work. But what really bothered Buterin was Wright's claim regarding selfish minor theory. Wright had apparently said that in the context of selfish mining, gamma, gamma gamma can be less than zero. What the fuck does that mean? Butrin took the floor, stating, "It's an absolute nonsensical claim. It makes no sense because gamma is the percentage of the network which is colluding with the miners, which, by definition, is between zero and one." So given that he makes so many nonsensical mistakes, why is why is he why is this fraud allowed to speak at this conference? Woo. Nice. Samsung Mao, CSO at Blockstream, quickly second the question to audible applause and laughter. Right rebuttal. Selfish mining is an attack vector of Bitcoin. Wright clarified that his meaning was that honest miners would be rewarded as opposed to selfish miners. Wright has written on the subject previously saying, again and again, we see technocrats, academics, and demagogues, 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 oversimplifying, downplaying profit, and seeking to apply the physics of rocks to human interactions. Unfortunately for them, none of these holds in the real world. Human interactions are always conducted at a level far too complex to be modeled using simple state tables. That aside, flawed the pseudoscience, such as the selfish mining cancer, are incredibly simple to debunk. Once you get past the ad hominem attacks, and typical troll tactics. 
Even my grandmother can understand how asinine such a quack level theory really is. Let's see, uh, in the fray, Joseph Pong, co-creator of the Lightning Network, stood up to say that as a Lightning Network developer, the author and the author of its white paper, he did not understand Wright's presentation at all, and that he felt most others there were in the same boat. The real world episode ended when the Emmons called a stop to it, but of course it continued on Twitter. Dr. Craig S. Wright, Smackdown by Vitalik. Oh, where are my degrees? It burns, it burns. Sorry, Beavis, I meant metallic. <laughs> um, metallic, Samsung did then attack Bitcoin's cashers for calling it Bitcoin Cash. That seems unfair. Me, for example, have no issue with Ethereum Classic 62. <laughs> So I do think both sides need to improve their discourse, but Craig Wright is crazy. Fiend. <laughs> <He's pissed. laughs> so a little uh... That was pretty funny, guys. You know, um, I didn't understand what, you know, they were... Well, so... I mean, because we have this the way we do, we can actually show the video. I just don't know how long it is. Two minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> There's a video to this? Yeah, Vitalik Buterin standing up right there. Okay. You want to play it? It's playing. It's kind of quiet. pretty quiet the video so if you if you guys want to follow up on that then then I would just uh, look at the link because it's a quiet video uh, I even had a hard time hearing it here but uh, yeah so I mean that's that right so <laughs> that cool. is funny though man. see if they got anything over here Biggest loser in 2018's first quarter, Ripple. That Ripple. Was, let's see what they have to say on that one. So of course, it's... All right, so... This only has not been a widely viewed article, but we'll read it just the same. Oh, and it's not even long. It's just real short. But I will zoom it in if I can. No, it won't let me do it on this website. I always forget that. All right, so it says... With the first quarter of 2018 coming to an end, every cryptocurrency felt some pain. Or major pain, it actually says. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't Bitcoin to suffer the most. Ripple's R, or XRP took the hardest hit among the top cryptocurrencies, down a massive 77%. Now, before Rip, it says, now before the Ripple haters out there start laughing and saying, I told you so, this isn't even Ripple's worst performing quarter. In 2014, they took an even bigger dive, down 94%, before shooting back up beyond all expectations. And look who the author is, Ross Davis, San Francisco News Desk. Hi, 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 that's our buddy. Yeah, I'm gonna click and see if it takes me, no, it won't. That's an email link, crap, so. Well, that's nice that Ross got picked up by coinfeed.co.uk. Hey, he might uh, start trending over there. Yeah, he might. 
he better not bump me out of my trend. <laughs> <laughs> give him a call. Give him the what for. So he'll. I make him write another article and make me trend again. <laughs> so. so yeah, yeah. That's, this market cap is just fucking crazy, guys. Like, what are you guys? What's your feeling about this? You know, uh, when are we going to turn this around? It's down to two hundred and fifty now. I just refreshed it, man, and it's got you know two hundred and forty nine. With 956. Really? Like, god damn. I just hit reload myself. It's changed back to 250 oh. now. I'm seeing 249.9, so. Anyway. Yeah. Very low. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the hell? Everything's and plummeting. At $46. Damn. Little Neo. Little Neo. Poor, poor little Neos. <laughs> Not much comments here, guys. No, I mean, how many people are still watching, even? Ten people. Really? Fucking ten people? Ten people, bud. Dude, that's not even worth running the show for. Right? Well, it is, but... <sighs> as tired as I am. I mean, that's ridiculous. Share it out, guys. You know what time it is. What the hell? What time it is? God damn, do I want it? Yeah, let me refresh my quick and compare. I was down like 30 grand. Ah, uh, damn. Total 30 I've grand. I've lost 95 grand in the last 24 hours. I haven't lost that much in the last 24. I'm not even down that much overall, but... 96. God damn it, man. Even the bot today. How's the bot doing? Hadn't done many sales. It's been doing buying because it's buying the dips, but I do have sa sales of 5.49, 2.82, 1.11, and 4.37. Uh, let me go back one page. And 4.5, 2.05, and 3.24. So, mm -hmm. still buying, buying the dip. Buying the dip. And I hope it fucking stops dipping. I know. We just needed to moonshot a day or something. Huh? Just needed to uh, moonshot today. That's what we need. We need to go ahead and pump it up. What's up, Jason? God damn, man. This is ugly, man. Syndic 250,000. Syndicate's up. We got uh, 10,952. Uh, let me make sure. Yep, still update it. So we've, we're... Tomorrow we should go... Sometime between today and tomorrow's show... We should go over a thousand staked coins. Wow! So, yep, in two weeks, so we're getting about five hundred coins a week. I mean, that's fucking good, man. I think so. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, uh, not disappointed in that at all. So, that's uh. So, what do you think, man? You think we should get some more? At this point, anything you sell to get into it. You're gonna be taking a smash on. Yeah, I know. So if we uh, let's look at uh, market cap again. If we look at syndicate. Is well, syndicate set twenty nine cent. So twenty nine point eight. Let's see. Let's go to markets and see where it's at. Where. On Cryptopia, yep, tw they're all like 29 cents. So 29.6 cent on Cryptopia. Bittrex is 29.8. So. Yeah. I just haven't heard shit about, about Syndicate doing anything, man. You know? Yeah, if you dump a bunch over there and the price bottoms out, then you're screwed. 
So definitely uh, did get a pump here and right over here, but it was over, let me see, on January 14th, it was $1.19. And yeah, dollar nineteen back in January, and now it's less than thirty cent. So definitely a uh, and. Yeah, Chris said you can always sell and crap coins. Selling them and buying this dip would be a chance to get out of it even. So that is true if it when it comes back. I'm really surprised, man. I don't know, maybe it's the midweek thing going on with the show. Because two days ago we had four thousand four hundred views. Yesterday we had like two thousand views. Today I'll be surprised if we get to a thousand views <laughs> because I don't even know how many shares do we got. I'm gonna go look, see who's been sharing. Let me reload this page. Yeah, Michael, ONT is on a run today. It's one of the few that are in the green. And let me see, only 20 shares. Only 20 shares. I know, right? That's I did I two of them. I did more than that. Let me see who all shared. Luke Wright did. Uh, Nick shared a couple times. I shared like four times. Jumar shared. Carlene shared once. And Jason shared once. And everybody else did not share. Hmm. Very Chris Snook didn't share. Come on, Chris. Get it out there, bud. <laughs> We've made improvements. We have made improvements, man. Look at our show now. Looks like we are uh, at the studio. Let's see. Let me go ahead and put this back. Move there we go. Here. All right. Uh, uh, uh. All right, so I just y'all probably heard that ding come through my speakers. I'm not sure. <laughs> heard what? The the comments. Fresh says uh, Shadow says it never shows his his uh, shares. So. I'm just looking at the Electronium ETN page, so let me, I'll refresh that shadow. Maybe it's that. Now it says 24 shares. Josh shared it. Shadow, I think you're sandbagging, dude, because it's not showing your shares. <laughs> are you, are you, are you telling us the truth? Yeah. <laughs> Facebook says otherwise. Yeah, Facebook says no bueno. <laughs> it's all good, man. Let's see what we got going on on our other streams over here. Not much happening over on YouTube even with the hashtags. You know, it doesn't show Twitter on here. It doesn't show Twitter? Mm -mm. Well, Twitter's actually Periscope. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's showing Periscope then. They're online over there. So, cool. Is what it is then. We'll just keep plugging. Doing uh, doing the free, free information give out that everybody loves. Yeah. They love the free info. It's going to come to an end soon. We are going to start charging. Let me see where we're at on ICO stats. Matter of fact, this would probably be a good night to go over uh, upcoming ICOs, man. 
when nobody's on the show. Then they'll get pissed off that they missed out on us going over an ICO. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll pay the 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 twelve people that are here get the benefit. The rest of them can piss off. <laughs> Too busy to watch the show. Hmm. Okay then. All right, so. Neo is only up 147,000% since ICO, Doc. God damn it, man. That hurts. Stratus is up 47,000%. Everyone is depressed and trying to forget crypto. You know, I did notice that when the market is way down, like nobody comes on hardly. Yeah. Like, they're probably telling us, what are you guys doing fucking the show? Stop looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't I don't look, even want to look at it. I didn't look at my uh, thing all day. Fuck, man. There's a bunch of uh, upcomers, upcoming ICOs. Let's see. Where are you at? Oh, I'm on. Uh, I went to ICOStats.com, and then I went to up, uh, upcoming ICOs. Here's one. I don't know what it is, but it sounds cool. Element. Element. I've heard something about Element. Proof of talk. They got a 10,000 F soft cap and a 30,000 F hard cap. ICO price 0.0002 F. So, three zeros two. Element is a blockchain infrastructure designed for e commerce market. Looks like they've hit their soft cap. And. See if uh, let me go back one because I can look at um, where is it? It's 27 days left. Oh, <clears throat> I was sometimes they have reports on these sites you can look at, but I don't want to give them my email right now. But there's lots of ICOs coming up. That's what we need to do, man. We need to do some due diligence on some ICOs and. Uh, and go from there. That way we're not giving a half-ass uh, review. And we can give our honest opinion. Yeah. Maybe uh, you pick one, I pick one. Uh, we both do our homework on that, and then we present it in the show. That's what we so think. I'd rather have everybody help us. <laughs> yeah, but you, know, you never know if you're going to get 10... Or 40 watching. <coughs> LSD. Okay, let's see. Um... <laughs> I don't see anything, man, that really uh, can get behind. <coughs> you know, half the time for me I mean the name it's marketing right so I kind of look at the marketing on it um, happy town is probably not one I would get into just or, <laughs> you know what I mean it's just like happy town yeah. like, are you serious you know they have Nexus uh, Goldex they do have some coming up that are in pre ICO right now <laughs> Do bunny coins get busy in your wallet if you have more than one? <laughs> that should be a perfect staking coin, right? Right. Thoughts on Investio, Ico? Investio? Investio. Money coin. Let's see. Where is Investio located where we can look at it? Uh, up 
take a trading platform, more details will be released. Social service for the crypto community. Smart lottery. You know what? There's a cool uh, YouTuber, man. I follow his channel. Let's see here. Well, Invasio is not listed on ICO alert. Uh, distributed AI. Invasio. Oh. Distributed AI. This is deep learning, self learning computation, and scalable. 34 process projections, live data banks, 140,880 financial projections. 3,025 live product users. I don't see uh, their white paper listed anywhere. There's a... Uh... Basic Income Bitcoin, a platform for universal basic income. Active since April 4th, seven days left. What a trip, you know what that one is. Let's make basic income happen. Got. With Invasio, I they didn't they didn't even have their uh, white paper listed yet. So no, I can't, no, I can't go through it yet. At least not properly. Check out this guy's uh, channel. Let's see here. I just did his video, but let me come back to this guy covers some good uh, icos. And he's covering. Okay, well, let's see what the, he's got. Anything? Let's see this guy's channel. He usually covers uh, Icos pretty well. That's what I like about him. Let's see here. Dude, I don't know if our ticker is correct. At least not based on. Uh... Um, coin market. All right, so what's this guy? The Kryptoniac. I like his little header right there. That's pretty cool. The, yeah, right. Which one? Uh, which one are we looking at here? Which video? So, let's see. Let's go to videos. Um, our playlists, right? I think playlists. He's got ICO reviews. He's got 75 ICO reviews, man. Updated today, it says. Well, digital. Utemis ICO, a decentralized B2B e commerce using blockchain to shape Latin America's market. I don't trust that one. Native video box. There's, um, <laughs> there's Bunny Token, the adult industry token. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, decentralized web services. Looks like he goes over a lot of them. That bad bank account based blockchain. That looks pretty interesting. 
bad. It's nine minutes long. Yeah. Bank for you, I can review mobile money remittance system. It's like he goes Bank. over he goes over a lot of different ones. I think he does pretty good. I take a little break. Right back. Alright, cool. So definitely some uh different avenues out there. Looks like I got a couple positions on the bot that look like they oh just got another green so could be making some cells here shortly I think that's a good sign good sign guys trying to get things going here Invasio home oh that is a white paper all right John I'll take a look at that buddy I don't know if it's gonna make it on tonight, but I will take a look at it. Invasio. Let me see if I can pop that over here, get it in an open tab while it's still downloading. I got so much stuff running on the computer. Let's see what my percentage at. Eh, not too bad on the computer percentage, so that should be all right. Let's see. It's just plugging along. It might be a big white paper. 62 pages. Whoa. That's pretty long. Equity gifting and bonus structure. Looks like Mike. Huh? Yeah, I did see that, Nick. I pretty much, when they closed it down the first time, I figured that my money was gone. So, that's uh, money to never come back, buddy. <laughs> I even sent them a ticket. They finally started answering my tickets from two months ago. So, so John sent me the uh, the white paper for that Invasio. So I'll take a look at that when uh, since it's sixty two pages long. It's like they're getting longer and longer with the white white paper and how long it's taken. So. Um, do you know, have a contact info? Let's uh, see if we can't get him on the show. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see where they're from. William James Dariemple West, Invasio's founder and CEO. I'd like to break pitch slightly. Let's see. He's got a Twitter link or something. We'd like to get the guy on the show. Maybe he can uh, woo us. Yeah, go over it and help us. And our 22,000 member group. Oh, yeah, there's a Facebook and Vaseo network. Uh, it's been there since 2013. They got uh, Telegram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Facebook.com slash Invasio Network. Invasio on Twitter, huh? Let me see here. On Twitter, yep. It's, uh, it says. I'll look them up on Facebook over here. Invasio Network. Stage three of uh, I and V Ico is on, is now live. One dollar uh, plus twenty five percent bonus. You have two weeks to claim your bonus coins. 
That's where they're at. So, be nice to, um, all right, I guess that's them with the two little, the peace sign thing up here, but I don't, website, London, United Kingdom, um, very responsive to messages, all right. John says if you invest during ICO, each coin you buy, they give you a share of the, of the company if they have an IPO in the future. Wookty. What's up, bud? I like your hair. Do what? I like his hair. Oh, that's not his hair. He's got something in the background that makes it look like his hair is whipping up. That's funny. <clears throat> All right. So I sent out I sent a message to their group, <coughs> and uh, and we'll see we'll see if they uh, reply back. From that you know what, what's cool Bob is that if you do it and you sh you're showing it on the monitor yeah I mean well if he's live <coughs> then we'll have to show him live <laughs> on the show as well so we'll try no, but I, I, what I mean is like if you if you're showing where like if it's a tweet or a Facebook post or something then we can ask our buddies to you know comment on it uh, where was it? Crap. So it's, it's so good and stylish video show <laughs> looks excellent. Compared to earlier show, this is very wow. <laughs> well, thank you. It Lucky. is humble. glad to see you back. <clears throat> right. So hopefully, guys, if you see these, send out some tweets and Telegram messages, Facebook. Say hey, come on the You Crypto Madness show. So. I think they'll be happy to come, man. As you know, awesome as you've gotten this to look, man. This is awesome. And uh, you know, we'll try to try to keep it upbeat. And it looks like they've got uh, they've got holdings in Seychelles and in Hong Kong. Well, I'm gonna <coughs> it says it's a. Uh, Invasio Holdings Limited is out of Seychelles, and Invasio Limited is a Hong Kong registered subsidiary. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see. See what happens. See if we can get them on here. That's supposedly a uh, out of the UK as well. So maybe because uh, it does say it's a UK. Hell, they got servers in Thailand. They've got holdings in England. Uh, let's see where Unit 12 West Quay Whipstable is. We'll have to do some uh, cut and pasting <laughs> to see if we can locate where they're located at. We should just go to England and make a, make a trip around to uh, Electronium. You know, just go around the whole a whole freaking crypto tour to all the different uh, locations. But yeah, I'll get back to checking this whole thing out. See what we can we can learn about. You know, I'm a little bit actually disappointed in New Real right now. You know, we keep getting, well, we get promises that the CEO is going to come on, the CEO is going to come on, and then nothing right oh we're gonna get in touch with you from puerto rico and nothing so um you know true that so that is definitely some things that we're gonna have to take into consideration in the future <laughs> when uh you know 
if uh, yeah. you say you're going to do something, you don't do it, then, I mean, I don't know what kind of repercussions there actually could be, but at any rate, <laughs> I mean, I try to do what I say I'm going to do, so I'd rather somebody tell me, yeah, I don't know if I can do that, I don't think I can do that, and then it's okay, right, because it's not like something that you said you were going to do, so... Just right. kind of, I try to just be a man of my word and do what I say I'm going to do and work on it from there. But um, anyway, how are we looking on the uh, the viewership here? Let's see here, seventeen. Oh, uh, moving up. Okay. So that you know, that's the main thing. Is that? Let me close that. Let me put the market cap back up so I can catch that later. I don't even know if I want to look at the market cap. That's like suicidal <laughs> tendencies. <laughs> Oh, we went up a billion. <laughs> a whole billion. Woo woo. So everything's still down. Except for ontology. Still kicking it. 4.25. The same people that were up are still up. <laughs> for whatever reason. Wow, it's red. Wow, it's... A, yeah. This but, hurts going over. Yeah. <clears throat> but man, it's hard to believe that three months ago we were fucking at seven hundred and something billion. <clears throat> I know, right? I'm like, actually seeing the little way. floaty heart comments today. <laughs> How cool, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm showing seventeen. So. So, um, yeah, we, we covered the crypto hopper. Yeah, we did uh, briefly. I mean, there's really not much to cover. It's buying dips, right? So. Yeah. How about the staking? Like, we just bought uh, between 8.30 and 10.15. One, two, three, four, five positions. So it's still buy, buy, buy. Let me see. Staking. We did. Um, I went over. Let me see. Make sure. 10.952. Usually around midnight-ish. It, it starts dropping some more coins. But we're at 10,952 coins. It's 30 cent. Uh, so we've staked 989 coins. And... 989. Even at thirty cents, we're looking at uh, twenty-two dollars a day right now. So I think that's fucking good. Yeah, especially being where it's at low, you know, in price. But it's uh, it's doing its thing, man. Let me just double check, and make sure the node is yep, node is running. So everything's going good over there. Uh, really not too terribly much. I need to get with Tony because the miner keeps like just arbitrarily deciding it's going to just shut down. Only the uh, only the side that uh, only the RX five eighty side. So that's uh, only the yeah only. Yeah, the Radeon side, the 570s and 580s, they're kind of just like shutting down every so often. Um, let me see if I can look at that. Uh, right now it's still going, but it seems like every so often I look at it and it's like off, and then I have to walk in there and turn it back on, and it says it's running, but zero hash. So I'll get with Tony, try to get him tomorrow. I don't see him on the show tonight, but have to work on it since he's uh i'm more of the nvidia guy and he's more of a radeon guy so we're gonna see what we can get together yes yeah, scott we see that pow h3d is doing his thing but we're we don't cover the same coin every we try not to cover the same thing every single night and this would be like three days that we've talked about that particular coin and both pierre and i don't plan on getting in on it so we're kind of passing it by yeah But we did make note that it is going up, right, in value? Fuck yeah, it is. So, 
can't complain. I did not, man. I did not invest, and I do not plan to invest. It's a Ponzi, man. I mean, although it's a legit Ponzi, um, I'd rather be invested in something that's going that's trying to do something, you know. So that's why, for me now. Oh, I just got a Facebook uh, message back to email the CEO about coming on the show. Hey. So, nice. I know, right? So I will send him an email as soon as we get off of here to try to get him in the fold. So we'll try to get the CEO of Invasio on and learn about their AI technology and what they plan to bring to the table. Maybe we can get it <coughs> scheduled up. So I think that would be a, a good thing. Hell yeah. I see my mom is watching. What's up, mom? <laughs> hey, mom. When are you coming <laughs> on the show? I know, right? Right? Look at our studio now. <laughs> I've, I've seen your mom on here a few times, so. It's, uh. Yeah. She keeps tabs on me. Making sure you're eating your steak and eggs and staying healthy. Yeah, man, I don't go to the steak and eggs place anymore. They Last changed. time you had like a pork chop or something, big slice of ham or pork steak or yeah. something. Yeah, I'm going over to the Longhorn now for their uh, giant steak, ham, and eggs. <laughs> Green eggs and ham, said Sam I Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, that's a... Uh, that's about it, man. I mean, uh, there's really not much to report to on today, guys. I mean, uh, went over the news, and there really isn't much news. <laughs> yeah, the market is red, <laughs> which has pretty much become the normal. Um, it went up yesterday. We were all excited and pumped, and then it came right back down today. So this is what it is. We just got to keep holding, keep uh, doing our thing. Oh, here's some interesting one. Wait a minute. Check this one out, Bob. Matter of fact, since the date shift, I have not sold one position. Bought five positions, no sells yet. So, since the what shift? Uh, since the day shift over at 8, eight o'clock evening time, it, it shifts like the day for some reason on the crypto hopper. So like right now, it's showing the fifth through the sixth. We have no sells yet, only buys. Well, so let's see here. Let me send you this article here. See what you think about that, Bob. See if that's interesting. Well, I will click on it. Ripple has tried to buy its way into major exchanges. Oh, you know what? I do need to. Cover that. Let me move this over here in a minute. Oh, there we go. Is it? It's a video, or no? Um, dude, you know how to pick these long ass articles that are like three days long. Man, I just saw it on Bloomberg. <laughs> All right, so I'll read this one. All right, it says. Ripple has a problem. The startup controls the world's third largest cryptocurrency, XRP. Banks have signed onto its network and bought equity stakes in its business, which wants to rewrite how money moves around the world. And yet, when it comes to obtaining a coveted listing for XRP on two of the top U.S. cryptocurrency exchanges, Ripple hasn't been able to close the deal. It isn't for a lack of trying. Last year, the San, Fran uh, San Francisco-based company suggested paying financial incentives to the ve uh, venues, Gemini and Coinbase, according to four people with direct knowledge of the matter who asked not to be identified discussing private information. For all the hype surrounding Ripple and XRP, its absence on markets like Gemini and Coinbase is eye-catching. By dangling money in front of the exchanges, Ripple signaled that it that its future success hinges in part on getting XRP listed on the top trading venues, but there's a major headwind in that effort. U.S. officials have warned unlicensed exchanges not to list tokens that could be deemed securities. XRP's control by a single company 
has fueled speculation it could fall under that designation. All right. So last year, a Ripple executive asked whether a $1 million cash payment could persuade Gemini to list XRP in the third quarter, according to people familiar with the, the matter. That followed by other attempts by Ripple to get Gemini to add XRP, exploring strategies like paying out rebates and covering related costs that people, uh, the people said. During preliminary talks with Coinbase last fall, Ripple said it would be willing to lend the exchange more than $100 million worth of Ripple to start letting users trade the asset. According to a person privy to that discussion, Ripple, without putting the proposal in, writing told Coinbase, it could pay back the loan in XRP or dollars, the person said. If the exchange had chosen the latter, it could have profited um, had the tokens become more valuable upon being listed, the person said. Gemini and Coinbase both declined to pursue the proposals, the people said. Presented with a description of Ripple's proposals to the exchanges, company spokeswoman Emily Kramer said some of the information was inaccurate but declined to specify which details she was <coughs> disputing. Regardless, Ripple has always been transparent about our focus on building a, and growing a strong XRP ecosystem, she said. We want XRP to be the most liquid digital asset possible to enable faster, cheaper global payments. Gemini, which was co-founded by Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, declined to comment. A Coinbase representative declined to discuss specific assets, but referred uh, but referred Bloomberg's, Bloomberg to the exchange's listing framework. It's not necessarily unusual to pay for cryptocurrency listing uh, costs range from one dollar or one million uh, dollars for a reasonably regarded token to three million for an opportunity to get quick liquidity, according to a report from Autonomous Research, which added that the figures are based on conversations among market participants and aren't exact. That's crazy to me, Bob. Like. Uh having to pay one to three million dollars to get up on an exchange and then we're over here bitching about why etn and titanium haven't gotten on an exchange like that is crazy that they are willing to pay that much money i know that's well i think wasn't it uh, richard l said that they paid like 25 grand to get on craptopia yeah. So 25 grand, okay, I can see that. But 1 million or 3 million? Like what the fuck? That's a lot of cheddar. It's taking your investors money and, you know, blowing it. Just fuck throwing it down the flushing it down the toilet. All right. So it says read more about exchanges charging to list tokens. A few things that propelled XRP's price more in recent months than speculation that the token is set to graduate to a U.S. exchange, which face stricter regulatory purview than markets based in some other parts of the world. A U.S. listing would also cement XRP standing among titans of cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, the most popular and valuable of the bunch. To its adherents, XRP is a valuable link between the world of banking and digital currencies that comes with the backing of a Silicon Valley technology company. XRP is designed to revolutionize how banks move cash across borders, making transactions faster and cheaper. Ripple uses incentives to entice market makers to buy and sell XRP and periodically sells its digital token to institutional investors. According to its website, while the coin doesn't represent an ownership stake in Ripple, the concern is the close relationship might still lead regulators to deem XRP a security. Authorities are still clarifying which tokens deserve that designation. If XRP is classified as a security, it would be removed from the largely unregulated wild west of cryptocurrencies and become subject to requirements similar to those that govern assets like stocks. 
uh, so would exchanges so would exchanges that offer it okay all right so we're almost to the bottom guys <laughs> so yet investors aren't giving up based on Ripple's success and gaining new customers as well as speculation it would be listed in the US XRP shot up more than 14 times in value between early December and early January according to data compiled by Coindesk that was before Coinbase debunked speculation that it had decided to offer XRP on its market another surge came on March 5th after CNBC scheduled Ripple's chief executive officer Brad Garlinghouse and Coinbase chief uh, operating officer Azif Hiriji uh, to appear on the same program the next day setting off speculation that they were about to announce a listing paying for a listing could be perfectly legal given the traditional markets charge such fees uh, said Jesse overall an, an attorney at Clifford Chance but things could get complicated if a digital token were later deemed to be an unregistered security he said in such a case both the exchange and issuer could face penalties he said <coughs> excuse me listing on an exchange is an integral part of the process of facilitating an unregistered unlawful illegal securities issuance to people who are not allowed to buy overall said companies are required to pay for listings on the largest US stock exchanges but they also must meet and maintain listing requirements. For instance, NASDAQ Inc. stock markets can charge annual listing fees ranging from $42,000 to $155,000, according to the company's rule book. And that's on NASDAQ, so one to three million dollars seems a, lit, a bit excessive to me. Right. What do you think? You know, yeah. Here we have a what NASDAQ charges, 42000 to 155000 okay. That seems pretty reasonable for NASDAQ, but for a crypto exchange to charge one to three million dollars? Holy fuck, man. I, I know, you'd think it wouldn't be much more than like copy and paste to add a coin, change a couple lines maybe, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know, I've never listed one on an exchange, but you would think that would be it. Uh, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission said has said that platforms serving as trading venues for digital assets deemed to be sec securities will need to register with the agency as a national exchange or qualify for an exemption. The regulator has also subpoenaed firms and individuals behind coin offerings it believes might be breaking the law. A person with direct knowledge of the matter said earlier this year an SEC spokesperson declined to comment on the agency's view of XRP. The SEC warnings have resonated in the industry. In March, the Winklevoss twins submitted a proposal for a regulatory body to govern digital currency markets and custodians. There's a reason listing fees aren't as common in crypto as they are on traditional securities platforms, said Dave Weisberger, CEO of CoinRoutes, a cryptocurrency data and order routing company. In the equity space, listing fees have always historically been coupled with the notion of regulation while digital currencies are relatively unsupervised he said holy crap dude the phone dang all right man i guess uh let me mute this fucker <laughs> yet yet the motive to list is still there a crypto issuer paying to get their token on an exchange would make a hundred times the payment by selling off those coins when it lists Weisberger said so um, so yeah I, I think one to three million is rather excessive <laughs> you know um, you could list ten stocks on Nasdaq for that price um, so definitely or more. yeah or more right I could see that though. A crypto issuer paying to get their token on an exchange could make 100 times that payment by selling off those coins when it lists. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Wow. And what now do you my, guys think? Now my wife decides she wants to message me 50 damn times. <laughs> so, actually, she's trying to send me. Uh, stuff for the show 
Matter of fact, she sent me the Ripple article. She probably sent it to you too. Okay, this Ripple article was uh, <clears throat> pretty interesting. First time I've heard that they've, you know, they're paying one to three million. Holy fuck, man. Right. And like, uh, I yeah. never even factored that into my ICO, you know, so that's something that, you know, you got to factor in putting a little bit aside to pay to the exchanges to get listed ASAP. And, uh, holy crap, dude. Am I gonna, I'm at the mute mine as well, it appears. Is it just going book wild? Yeah, it's just ding, ding, ding. I'm like, really? The notifications, I, and I think my desktop sound is on. So every time mine dings, like everybody that's watching the show gets a ding. So, um, so yeah, Carlene, the Winklevoss twins were the people that helped, supposedly help with Facebook get started and I guess got a big payout from that. And then um, they're the first crypto billionaires or they may not be billionaires right now in crypto with the way the market <laughs> is, but they were a couple months ago the first crypto billionaires so um i did have let me uh, just read because i know probably a lot of people haven't gone over there but uh let me uh <clears throat> go ahead and address this um uh titanium thing so if you have titanium or bars on hit BTC. This was the official post today. It says, due to lack of response from hit BTC, Titanium will Im implement an independent T-bar distribution process on April 5th, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, with full team resources available for immediate support. We are disappointed with this outcome and apologize on the behalf of at HitBTC. So tomorrow at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or uh, wherever you are in the world, I think uh, Pacific time is what do we, uh, UTC minus eight. So whatever that equates to you, there will be a post that's going to come out that has, if you're on hit BTC, it's going to give you all of the steps on what you need to do to get your T bars. So, and hopefully, somewhere in the middle, hit BTC pops their head out of their behind. But at right now, they're just doing away with the hit BTC thing and going to issue them directly. Uh, to people but there's some steps you have to do which will be outlined tomorrow at noon when it comes out <coughs> why and, did hit BTC want anything to do with it well hit BTC still trading bars they're the only place you can trade bars they never stopped with the bars um, and they I don't know what the specifics are with why hit BTC hasn't complied to helping out and get their people the uh, their T bars. Uh, all the other exchanges have, but not hit BTC. So um, Titanium decided that they're gonna do it themselves and get their people their T bars. So uh, unfortunately, it's not as quick as if uh, hit BTC were to go ahead and do it themselves. But it's it's a solution. And it might be better, man, because uh, now the hackers have to apply to get uh, the T bars. Supposedly, who knows? If yeah, but it, already. it's still going to be the uh, probably similar guidelines to what they were, right? With the time frame and doing, I'm sure there's going to be some steps that people are going to bitch and moan about. But um, they can either do them or not do them. You know, I mean, it's up to them. Um, I, I'm sure everybody, the you know, the token holders. Um, I know Titanium would have preferred for the uh, hit BTC just go ahead and do their part and and issue them. But 
since that hasn't happened, they're not going to uh, make the token holders on HitBTC wait any longer. And but try... uh, on HitBTC is where uh, most of the stolen coins are, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as we track down, that's where most of them were sent to, right? So you would think that that guy is not going to be able to get his 18 million or whatever bars, you know, into T bars. Well, there's going to, I mean, there's going to be steps that people have to do. I think it's multi step. So you definitely need to follow the instructions. And uh, when those instructions come out, I might even do a uh, video, a YouTube video on it, because it's only going to be a short window, I guess, that they're going to leave that open for people to do it. So if they're not paying attention, and they're one of these Win Lambo people that come out of the closet and pull their head out of the sand after two months and say, what about my T-bars on hit BTC? You're going to be screwed. So, well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people right now that aren't looking at the uh, market. You know, they're like, uh, I don't even want to look at it right now. I know I don't. Right. Well, <laughs> so, you know, um, that's kind of bad that they get fucked. Well, looking at the market and tracking where your coins are, I mean, it's one of those things. You're an investor, right? I mean, you know there's a problem. Obviously, they know there's a problem with hit BTC. I see it all day, every day in Telegram, right? So um, if they're not plugged into the market, and they may miss their window of opportunity. So I hope they, uh, they're staying plugged in. And I think most people know whether they've gotten their T-bars or not yet. And if they haven't, then <clears throat> they need to uh, be paying attention tomorrow because the notification went out. Let me give you an idea on kind of how this works. Um, the notification went out today, uh, two hours ago. I posted, okay. it, I posted it up personally in Titanium Community. I've got one comment and uh, three likes out of the whole group, almost 1,400 members in that group. So um, they need to, you know, it's pinned to the top. It's pinned to the top of Twitter. It's, pin, it's pinned everywhere, into the announcements, in Telegram, in, you know, everywhere that we have social media, it's posted. So hopefully they uh, pull their heads out of the sand and do it and follow the directions because it's very specific on the, directions um, and uh, hey Felicia what's happening sweetie yeah you need to drop that Stop. link for her too which link for the boy scouts oh yeah yeah I don't think you're gonna get many uh, donations uh. Yeah, tonight with uh, with the 15 people we have watching because we don't have your 40 something shares out. Mark it down like it is. Fuck. Carlene, you said that you're not the one pinging both of us now, but yet you pinged us both when you did that. Yeah. I'm gonna have to change my screen name to something like utterly weird. So, but at any rate, so we are gonna have a a Boy Scout fundraiser for Felicia. She's Felicia. Drop the GoFundMe link in the in the chat if you would to uh, the Boy Scouts. They're trying to raise uh, I think ten thousand dollars. That's quite high. I don't, you guys buying Boy Scouts or what? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of high. I mean, that's really high. In my yeah. humble opinion. But, you know, anything that can uh, help knock that down and help the Scouts, that's a, a good thing, you know? Yeah, that is true. But, you know, you could buy Walmart's whole camping section for less than 10 grand, probably. Right. But if that's what you need, that's what you need, and we'll do our best to try to help you fulfill what you need for that. But, uh, do what? 
So I got this email notification from Ethos. They're having a summit on uh, the 14th, East Coast Summit. Um, join us for the first ever Ethos East Coast Summit on April 14th. The Ethos team and community will be gathering in Ethos Birthplace, beautiful province, Rhode Island, for a day of ideas, discussion, and networking with like-minded people passionate about Ethos, blockchain, and unlocking the new economy. Oh, when is that? Uh, the 14th. The 14th of this month? Like in 10 days? Yeah, let's see. View this email in your browser, and then let me send it to you. Paste. Let's see if it shows for you. Mailchimp. Wonder how much that costs. Oh, it's free. It's free? Yeah, it says, we'd love for you to join, plus all attendees get a free, sweet East Coast Ethos Summit t-shirt. The summit is free with a refundable RSVP that's returned to you on arrival. Oh. I, my wife wants to go up there, man. Maybe I, maybe that's something we need to go do. That'd be pretty cool. New England. Oh, yeah. So, that's in 10 days from today. She's like, yeah, right. Fuck that, huh? <laughs> Only a 14-hour drive. That'd be there. <laughs> okay, first joke. The instructions, Bob, for hit BTC. Will they be like the crypto hokey pokey? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, it'll be definitely outlined. It's it's uh, unconventional, but I think it's about the only way they can verify what's going on so we'll have to have to see and since pierre's taken two breaks already i gotta go take one real quick uh, my monster needs released from my monster <laughs> <laughs> thank you there bob just uh built himself up even more okay so and he left me all alone with you guys so what do you guys want to talk about Left foot in. <laughs> um, so I don't know what the, you know steps you're gonna have to take during uh, to get the T bars. I think it's a better option though. I'm sure they're not happy about doing that, but I think it's a better option because I'm thinking, you know, the hacker, he can't. Uh, go to them and say, hey, I've got 16 million uh, bars, you know, uh, give me 16 million T bars, you know. He might be able to get away with a few, but I don't think he's going to get away with uh, with all of it, you know, but he'll probably still be a millionaire. Dude, I need to go ahead and uh, I think I'm going to go to that, man. Thinking about going to that for real. Yeah. The Ethos Summit. I don't even hold Ethos, but it'd be cool to go to. I hold a lot of fucking Ethos, but it'd be cool if you got them on the show. Keynote by uh, Ethos founder and CEO Shingo Levine. Keynote by Ethos advisor professor Maurice Hirth. Here, Lithy. Uh, live panels and Q and A's with the Ethos team. Community meet and greet. Special presentation and more to be announced. Man, Shingo looks like he's like twelve. He does. I wonder. Oh, he doesn't have. A, it's not a link. Adam Levine doesn't look like the Adam Levine I know. <laughs> and you get a cool shirt so yeah I will definitely keep that up because I will 
try to get to that one. That's in lovely Providence, Rhode Island. It says beautiful Providence, Rhode Island. I used to live up there when I was in the <clears throat> Navy, Newport. Yeah. On my ship. Everybody knows you buy the ship. Ship, ship. <laughs> God, that'll never get old. 28 yes. boys. Yeah, is, so that link is actually this one, guys. At GoFundMe.com. 10,000 bucks divided by 28. Each kid needs 357 bucks. Each kid needs $357. That's what $10,000 by 28 is 357 bucks. What? We are raising money for our Boy Scouts PK276 to go to summer camp. The reasons for this is no boys will be left behind. We would like for all the boys to have this experience of the summer camp. Thank you, God bless. There really needs to be a longer description. Felicia, are you the one that uh, is organizing this? All right, so there's been one, we're one one thousandth away right now. I will share that out on my Facebook, on my timeline. Please help this scout troop and post to Facebook. There you go, just hit 2,000 people's feed. You gotta put this in uh, every day, Felicia, to remind us. Which means you have to actually show up to the show again, Felicia, when we start. <laughs> Just pick it at you. <laughs> I'll share that. I'll even share that to the Electronium ETN. There you Real. go. It's something like uh, for Felicia. <clears throat> and pretty slow fucking day. Market just dropping. God damn, man. All right, there we go. Post that up there. All right, so. It's really fighting. The market cap is really fighting the 250 billion. Uh, area does not want to go below 250. Well, it's at 250 right now, even right? Yeah, I refreshed it, it was at 249, and so it's fighting between 49 and 50. And you know, those are one of the, the 50 is one of those whole numbers that, uh, you know, if we break through that, we could go to 40 something. All right, so, so Providence, that's pretty good. Who's down to go to Providence? We can make a road trip. It's only f 14 Who's hours. Go with the Minor Bob and meet the world fucking famous Minor Bob. I'm curious. Let me see how far that is, man. In beautiful Providence, Rhode Island. Uh... Distance from Grovetown, Georgia to Providence, Rhode Island. How far do you think it is? Oh. All right, distance. Well, miles. You're probably pretty close, actually. Let's see. Oh, it says it's only 958 miles, that it's a uh, 15 hours and 36 minute drive. Damn. There are 800, oh, okay, so <clears throat> as the crow flies, it's only 816 miles. So if I could fly, <laughs> be right there. As the crow flies. Yeah, so if we, if we didn't have to actually like take roads. <laughs> 
that's pretty it's pretty long man 15 hours that's longer than it took to get to um took to get up to Iowa from here Oof. so and that was pretty brutal <laughs> And then you still went for a, another ride, man. Hey, got to get there. It says it would cost $115 in gas to get there. $115 in gas. So, let's see. I'll pop that up here. <laughs> see right here? 958 miles. 15 hours 36 minutes. It says it would cost between 71 and 138. Show map. Damn, that's far. That's pretty pretty far. That's a nice little drive, bud. You down, yeah. Pierre? <laughs> no, I hope to be in Colombia, bud. Pierre's like, I don't like to drive to Fry's. I drive to no damn Providence from Georgia. <laughs> I don't even like to drive to... Uh... I don't like to drive to Walmart. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a that's a piece. Okay, let's see here. Diet pick. Holy fuck. Okay, so... Dude, if you tell me Diet Bitcoin sold like 20 million or something I'll be like you gotta be kidding me like uh let me give you uh, there you are right there so you know that other website that I used for the ICOs let me see it has uh you know it has diet bitcoin on there uh allegedly diet bitcoin is a faster lighter alternative to bitcoin the goal Four hundred and thirty million dollars. I don't see uh where you sent me that link, but I don't see uh do I have to type it in the search maybe? No, it says starts in uh thirty nine days. Under upcoming, just scroll down, it's on the third row down. Eleven twenty five, thirty nine days. I don't see it. Let me see, don't maybe. See it. Maybe I'm just missing it. No, I don't see it under there. Oh, there it is. Sorry. I'm blind. Goal 430 million. Who do you think you are, Robert Escobar? That's crazy. It's got a warning. Users should be extra cautious about this project. <laughs> View due diligence. Green lights, none. Links to a criminal organization is not desirable for a cryptocurrency and likely harms mainstream adoption. Insane fundraising goal of $430 million. Maybe I need to put this on the big screen instead of reading it from my other screen. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. It says, claims to be open source, yet unable to find any source code. <laughs> we would be more comfortable if the project characterized its code base as zero source. <laughs> <laughs> Insane discounts in the pre-ICO, most likely to promote users buying in early, but fails to account for no one wanting to buy a $1,000 coin when people could buy it for $2 only a few weeks ago. He's With, thinking he's going to get $1,000 a coin? That's what it says in here. This guy. Robert. With with the price increase not being driven by the market. Lots and lots of reference to Pablo. The coin <laughs> appears to be trying to promote itself on Pablo's name alone. The coin brings nothing new over Bitcoin. It is simply another clone, only this time with an ICO. Claims in the white paper of the coin being likely to be worth 5000 after one year. It, it is not credible that the co-founders have a reasonable way to estimate Diet Bitcoin's future price with any accuracy. Either they are delusional about their ability to make an accurate estimate, or they are lying. 
In both cases, investing in diet Bitcoin is hard to justify. Yeah. Claims to be unique in the FAQ uh, due to it only having 21 bill or million coins available, yet fails to mention that Bitcoin, after which it is named, has the <coughs> same property. Advanced section of the white paper plagiarizes the original Bitcoin white paper. Uh, no token allocation. N no ICO funding allocation. And then, the, then it was the links to criminal organization, insane, insane funding goal. Team only consists of Pablo's brother and two other people. Logo dumb as fuck. <laughs> it actually says that. Logo dumb AF. Yeah, I haven't even seen the logo. So, that's pretty... Company website, I, the, the, you know we gotta go there. Diet Bitcoin. It looks like... Bitconnect! No, it's got a diet with uh, the Bitcoin symbol turned to the side with a little D coming off of the, uh, off the B. <laughs> Buy Diet Bitcoin with Bitcoin. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Hurry, pre-ICO ends in 40 days, 48 minutes, and 22 seconds. Guys, as much as I like Pablo, this is one that I will not be getting into. But you can get 300,000 coins at $3.50 only. Round four, you get 400,000 at 1,000. Hmm. Hmm. So I can drop $3.50 to get 300,000 coins? Okay, I'll drop 10 bucks on it for a million. <laughs> 10, 10 bucks for a million. And then when it goes to 5,000, hmm. Yeah. You are a billionaire. <laughs> a gazillionaire. How did, how did you get all of your money, Pierre? Well, I invested in Diet Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Get the fuck out of here. Right. <laughs> this is my Exodus wallet. <laughs> I have millions of Diet Bitcoin. And I am living in this foreign hotel on the beach using my Diet Bitcoin. <laughs> I can, I can say I can say what I want about Robert, man. I've actually visited him in uh, Medellin and have a couple of pictures of me and him together. Um, like he doesn't know jack about fucking Bitcoin. That's, but it's diet Bitcoin. He may know a lot about diet Bitcoin. I think you know the shit about diet Bitcoin. Someone knew, knows how to copy and paste, it seems. Like, I think it's really these two other guys. Olaf Gustafsson, chief executive officer. Okay, so he's the CEO, and Robert is just the founder, okay? Gustafsson has experience working in the information technology and web technology space, but nothing about blockchain space. He has also worked with several families and major brands through ownership of intellectual property rights. Mr. Gustafsson has been the chief executive officer of Escobar Inc. since 2014 by appointment of Robert de Jesus Escobar Gaviria and has, through his leadership, led the company through several milestones which have developed and enhanced the enterprise value of Escobar Inc. for the Escobar family and for Robert de Jesus Escobar Gaviria. Uh, Daniel Rickberg, Chief Operating Officer. Dude, I, 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 I've, I've got to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pending post at ETN that says, Question, I earned, I think, almost 10 ETN last week through Mobile Miner, and now it has disappeared. Hell, <clears throat> dude, you lost two dimes. <laughs> I've got more than that probably riding around in my dryer right now. You right. know, 
and, and someone posted posted on YouTube. They said, uh, you know, is that POW H3D a scam? Someone put put underneath it R R I Lee proof of weak math. Oh my gosh! Everybody's a comedian. I love it. Weak math. <laughs> proof of weak math. The <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that shit was funny. Hey, this guy, uh, Robert or Daniel Reitberg, has experience working in the cryptocurrency field by developing and investing in the development of blockchain technology. He has a wide variety of knowledge in technology and private investment management and trading by having traded his own portfolio over the last 20 years. His role at Escobar Inc. has evolved through the years, and he is currently managing the intellectual property rights and trademarks owned by the Escobar family at the discretion of Robert de Jesus Escobar Gaviria. He is responsible for delegating day-to-day -day operations in cooperation with managers who in turn delegates to the employees and third-party consultants of Escobar Inc. The project. Da, da, da. Didn't we already go over that one time? That article? Yeah, we did, man. Like, this is crazy. So, platform launch and development, February 2018. The, the whole roadmap is okay, but well, where is this blockchain explorer that's released? Like, this is all nonsense. We're at 251 billion, went up a little bit. I need to get on diet Bitcoin. Diet Bitcoin. <laughs> That's some funny stuff, man. Right? Anyway, how long have we been online? We've been online two hours and two minutes. And What do you think, Bob? Think it's time to wrap it up tonight? Yeah, I think so, man. The uh, I think the shorter shows that we can put more information in instead of, instead of uh, you know, just four hours of half of it being us just chit-chatting and stuff like that. It's probably uh, better. And uh, looks like the bot over here is trying to buy Unicorn Gold right now. Unicorn Gold? Uh, unicorn Gold. Try, trying to buy some stuff. It's trying to buy the dip. So we'll see. We keep. Uh, Let's hope the market cup comes back. I know, man. We need another day where we sell off a bunch like yesterday, or the day before we sold sixteen positions on the second. So, not bad. This thing is looking like it's going to take a couple of weeks to come back, man. Oh, well, we're patient. Yeah. <laughs> we are definitely patient, so the bot is doing its botting. But anyway, so without further ado, ado, we ado to you. Bye, Felicia. Let me move that. I'm going to go ahead and push that over a little bit. And yeah, bye, Felicia. Thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Do us a favor if you're on YouTube and haven't, like or subscribe, hit the notification. We're streaming from multiple platforms right now, including Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and VK. So. Got lots of uh, streams going out, trying to build up those audiences a bit, and uh, hope to keep making some uh, changes as we go along. So thanks everybody for uh, participating and getting shares out there, and we will talk to you guys tomorrow. What say you, oh Dr. God. Reefer? Bam, we'll do the fist bump. Let me go ahead and start this little vidya. You guys are liking the uh